chapter two, kinematics. So let's just jump into it. Of course, read the book, but I'm gonna go over the key elements from chapter two. I'm trying to use this side of the board so that when I move over there, I have more room. Number one, the definition of displacement and position. Uh, so here we have some coordinate system, x, y. There's actually three coordinate systems. We also have a z axis coming out this way, but pretty much everything we're gonna do at the beginning just can be done in two dimensions. We're gonna use two dimensions. You can draw it on the board, it's nice and flat, so it's kinda cool. I can define the location of an object, x, y, if I want, but we're gonna deal with just one dimensional motion here. So we're gonna just smoosh everything down into one dimension. That means that I don't, I don't need this coordinate system. I need just an x-axis. So let's just draw an x-axis. Here is x equals zero, and then I can break these into ticks. Each of those are one. One unit, one meter, one meter, two meter, three meter, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so forth. So we define the position as x. Position is x. Where is it? Okay. But kinematics deals with motion. So now imagine that I start here and I move over here. So I start at, let's call this x1 is equal to one, and then over here, x2 is equal to two meters. I'm gonna leave off the units because I get lazy. So that's position. Number one, the position depends on where you pick your origin. This is not real. The x-axis is not real. It's a figment of our imagination. We pick it to be where we want it to be. And so if I move the location of my origin, then my values of position change. But now what I want to do is say, if I go from one to two, I go that way. I want to look at what we call displacement. Delta x is x2 minus x1. You see this Greek letter delta a lot. This always, in physics, always means change. So delta means change. So it's a change in x. So it's a final x minus initial. Change is always final minus initial. So it's x2 minus x, x1. And we call this the displacement. Now, notice what would happen if I put this is my origin. x0 is right there. Well, now x1 would be 2, and that would be 3, but either way, I get 3 minus 2 equals, wait, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 4. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2 meters, which is my displacement, which is the same as what I had before. The displacement does not depend on the location of your origin. Okay. The displacement can be positive, or the displacement could be negative, right? If I, and it, even with positive x values, imagine that I go from uh, x2 to over here, the origin, delta x would be zero minus four is negative four meters. So you can have a negative displacement. It's not the same thing as position. If you can have a negative position, it'd be over here, okay? Now, there is something that comes up sometimes and it's called distance. And a lot of times these are used interchangeably. But let me give you a quick example. So let's erase this and look at a difference between distance and displacement. Let's make a system right here. There's my origin. And I have one, two, three, four, one, two. And let's pick some places. Let's say this is uh, point A, that's B, and then C's over here. Now, imagine that I make a trip. I go from A to B, back to C. And I want to find my displacement, delta x. Well, it, it doesn't matter what I did. It just matters on the change, right? So delta x is going to be uh, the final position, which is negative 1, minus initial position, minus 1. It's going to be minus 2 meters. So my displacement going from here to there is minus 2 meters. Now, the distance because sometimes we need this, is how far I actually went. So in this case, I went one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight meters. See, so we, those are different, the same thing. I still end up at the same place, but the displacement is negative. The distance is a positive value for how far you travel. You can't have that as positive or negative. And it does come up from time to time. Okay, let's move on. 
you know, yeah, I, I want to point out, I go kind of fast. Um, so what's going to work best is if you read the, the reading assignment first in OpenStax. Uh, you don't have to completely understand everything. And then once you do that, come back and watch the video. And you can watch the videos more than once. Hopefully help, uh, help out with everything and you can ask questions. The next thing we want to look at is what's called the average velocity. And this is in one dimension again. We will get into two dimensions later. And I'm gonna, I'll just write it out. Average, average velocity. We define this in one dimension, V average, as the change in X divided by the change in time. It is a rate of change. It is, tells us how fast your X position is changing. When, well, if you've taken into thing. Average is still, it doesn't matter what happened in between, it's the average, okay? And we'll talk about that later. Now, the textbook does write it like this, which I don't like, but I'm just letting you know. So that's a bar. So a lot of times we, we write uh, V bar, meaning average. Uh, I prefer to like average, because that looks like V with an arrow over it, and we'll use arrows later for vectors. So that's that. So that's how we define average velocity. Now I will tell you what is wrong, and I see it a lot. Velocity is distance over time. Maybe you saw that in middle school. That is very wrong. Please be careful not to use that. That is not always true. Okay. Um, let me give a quick example. Imagine that we had uh, a, a graph of position as a function of time. And then here's my object moving like that. So if I want to find the average velocity, v average, it's going to be delta x over delta t. In this case, it's moving at a constant velocity so I can pick any point. So I can pick this point right here and that point right there. I can say, how far did it change in the x? That's delta x. How far did it change in time? That's delta time. And you can see that actually is the slope. Okay, so we're going to see that again. The, the velocity is the slope of position versus time graph. What if I said, oh, v is x over t? Well, here, what's my x value? Let's say it's some x value, but t is 0. This says x over 0 equals either undefined or infinity. It doesn't really matter to me, but you should have a problem right there. And then over here, if I take x over t, I'm going to get a different value. Because what you're actually calculating is the slope from here to there, and that's just not right. So this is, does not, that's not what we want to do. Average velocity. Um, let's look at the acceleration. Next, we define the acceleration as the rate of change of velocity. Delta V delta T. I made that too high. I forgot to get my camera right. Okay. Right there. That's as high as I can go. Okay. A equals delta V over delta T. Now, let me go ahead and write some notes over here about convention because I do things differently than the way the book does and uh, I want to make sure that we're, we're all on the same page here. It's going to say that the uh, this is still going to be, you know, some change in velocity, I'm so sorry about that, divided by a change in time. Actually, let's go ahead and derive the kinematic equation um, and then, and then we'll, we'll see how things work. So right here, let's make the assumption that delta t is equal to t minus zero. So this says that we're going to always start at time t equals zero, which doesn't always have to be the case. This is the way the book does it. It's going to make our, our things a lot better. So when I write delta t, it's going to be t minus zero. And so it's going to look like t, but it's not t. Okay. So if I do that, I can multiply both sides by delta t on this equation, and I get a delta t equals, I'm going to just write this as the final velocity is v, uh, and that's the initial velocity, v0. So I have to do this. v0 is the velocity at t equals 0. And v is just the final velocity. This is a function. So this is now I can write this as a t minus 0 equals 
v minus v0, and I'm going to solve this for v to get a function. So I'm going to add that to both sides. v is v0 plus a t, because t minus 0. And this is our first kinematic equation. This says that if it starts with a velocity v0 and has an acceleration a, after some time t, that's the velocity. So this is actually v is a function of t. This is a function. That's why it just says v. It's actually a function, right? There's not just one number. It's whatever you put in for t, you get the value of v. Um, yeah. Okay, now let's find a function for the position. But this is important. I'm going to put it over here so we can still see it. Uh, v as a function of t is v0 plus a t. Good. I want to make sure I got it on the board. Now let's go back to use our definition of average velocity and write an expression for uh, the position. So remember we have this. V average is delta x over delta t. I'm going to write that as x minus x. Am I too high? No. Nope. x minus x0 over t minus 0. Because that means I'm starting at x0 at t equals 0. And so from that, I can uh, multiply both sides by t, add x0. I get x as a function of t is x0 plus, this is important, the average times t, not the velocity. Okay. But what if I want to get that in terms of for an object that's accelerating, where the velocity is not constant, the velocity is changing over here. I can do that. So let's. there's another definition I can use for the average velocity. V average is going to be the final velocity plus the initial velocity over 2. That is literally just the average. You can't always do that. You can do that when the acceleration is constant. Okay. So I can write the average as that. I'm going to show you this derivation. You don't need to know it. You need to know how to use this equation. If you, I want you to understand where it comes from. It's not magic, right? It comes from something. So if I use this definition for average velocity and put it in up here, I can rewrite this. I'll just write it as x equals x0 plus v average, which is v plus v0 over 2 times t. That's the same thing. I just put that instead. Now I want to get rid of this velocity that changes, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to put this in for that v right there. And when I do that, I get x equals x0 plus v, which is that, v0 plus a t plus v0, right, because that's the second one, uh, all of that over 2 times t. Now, notice I have a v0 and a v0. I can add those together. So I get x0 plus 2 v0 t over 2, right? Th now this term, I have a 1 half a times t times t is so it's plus one half a times t squared. Those twos cancel, and I get x very low. I'll just put it up here because I'm write it anyway. X as a function of t is x zero plus v zero t plus one half a t squared. That's our second kinematic equation. That one's really the most important one that I think comes up the most, okay? Now, there are some situations where you could say, hey, well, what if I don't want to put time? I don't want to have time in my equation. Well, we can get rid of that by using this equation over here. So let's go back to the average velocity. Uh, v average is v plus v0 over 2, but it's also equal to delta x over delta t. Uh, I can use this, solve this for time, and put it into this equation right here. That's what I'm going to do. So let's solve this for time. I have v plus v0 over 2 equals x minus x0 over t minus 0, which is just t. Uh, I want to solve this for t, so I'm going to uh, multiply both sides by 2. V 
plus b0 equals 2x minus x0 over t. And now I'm going to I don't really like to do this, but I'm going to cross multiply, right? So I get t equals 2x minus x0 over v plus v0. Now if I substitute that into this equation, I get v equals v0 plus a, and this is my t, so that's 2x minus x0 over v plus v0. Now let's subtract v0 from both sides. I get v minus v0 equals 2ax minus x0. And then I'm over v0, this v plus v0. And then I multiply both sides by this. And I get v minus v0 times v plus v0 equals 2ax minus x0. Now, when you multiply this, I have a difference of v minus v0 times v plus v0. That just gives me v squared plus uh, minus, I'm sorry, minus v0 squared. And then I can subtract v0 squared from both sides, and I get this. v squared, v0 squared, plus 2a, x minus x0. And that's my third kinematic equation. There's another one in here that they like to put, but... That's, that's the only ones that really matter. Yeah, that's it. So with these three kinematic equations, we can find velocity as a function of time, x as a function of time, and this one is special. It finds the final velocity in terms of the initial and final x uh, and the acceleration and initial velocity without having to deal with time. Okay, next, what are we going to talk about next? V average kinematic equations. Um, oh, they do, they do talk about gravity. So let's talk about gravity really quickly. Um, and then I'm going to make another video with some problems. We'll just do problems. So it turns out, and we'll look at why this is the case, if I take an object and I let it go, it falls, and as it falls, it accelerates. And the value of that acceleration in the y direction, this is y, uh, so the object is right here, it's going to have an acceleration in the y direction of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we call this 9.8 a constant that turns up, it's called the, it's technically the gravitational field, and we call that g as 9.8 meters per second squared. So whenever you let an object free fall, it's going to have that acceleration. I'm sorry, the acceleration is negative g. So that gives me the following equations in the y direction. Uh, y is y0 plus v0t minus 1 half gt squared, where g is 9.8, and then uh, v equals v0 minus gt and v squared v0 squared minus 2gy minus y0. It's just an, another way to do acceleration problems. So that does come up. OK, I think that's it. That's the key concepts for chapter 2, kinematics.